Hi everyone, this is Shashwat here for the new students, you know, uh, who have joined for today. It is your first class and stuff, just as an introduction basis I'm telling. This is Shashwat here. Uh, and I hope Alisha has joined you, Jayashubhiya is there new. And who else is there? Tanish and uh, Mridula is also new. So you guys, please switch on your video. And other than that, Rutuja, Savi, Taif, Shumit, I think I need not to tell all of you. Are already there, also. Okay, so let's proceed with the class. You know, uh, we will just proceed from what we left in the last class or where we stopped. I'll just share my screen. Uh, is the screen visible to all? Please respond. It's visible, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, guys, I'm fine. So, you know, last day we were discussing regarding light, and uh, I guess till this or the, till the next slide we have covered up. So while we were discussing regarding light, just for the students who have joined in a summary basis, we are telling, you know, we uh, we started this presentation in the last two last class or something, one or two classes back, discussing regarding the light and texture. So how light works, like, you know, whatever you can see, there's a work of light. And a very normal, a very plain structure, like whatever you see, like, you know, you around you also, if you are testing it, around for dry structures, you can see at some places like you know structures are being made with just one color just this pattern the geometrical shapes are being altered falling on them and after that like you know the final result which you get is Rutuja, uh, i guess there is some background noise that you are having right uh, wait, fine. so you know that's how light works now this is the slide i guess we stopped in the last class that how light is just falling at your own room if you arrange it in a decent manner. Very first one showing you a direct light. You have seen with while playing, people playing carom and all. They put a kind of light on top of that board. Or uh, sometimes to see very thing, very something, something specific. You see a table lamp. It is just focusing the light on your book or this material that you are using. So that exactly from that point, light gets reflected to your eyes. And you see exactly that particular object what you want to see. Indirect is something like this. You have uh, like you know. I guess most of your rooms and stuff. If you don't have a false ceiling with a decoration on top, it's a plain roof, and that is usually painted white. And now the reason, if I talk about why it's painted white, then like you know, it's being used to reflect the maximum amount of light that you can have. Okay. Uh, sorry for the like you know. Uh, I'm really sorry that I have to stop in between. Just wanted to know, uh, that, uh, Rahul, am I audible to you? Rahul, someone named Rahul is there in class. Can you please respond, Rahul? Rahul, please respond. Bharat Deshpande, can you please respond? Bharat, can you please respond? He has not connected his own mic on. Right. Just give me a minute, guys. Bharat, am I audible to you? Bharat Deshpande? Bharat, can you please respond? Yes. Yeah, Bharat, uh, just wanted to know uh, you are in uh, some group. You got the link. You are in that K2201 class group. Uh, yes. Okay. So you are not there in any of the previous classes I, as far as I remember, right? Uh, register as Bhakti Deshpande. Uh, you have what? Bhakti Deshpande. Register uh, as Bhakti, Bhakti, Bhakti Deshpande. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. Right. So you are the student, right? Your name is Bharat, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Fine, no issues. Uh, that's why I just confirmed. Okay, fine. Your name is there and like, you know, for the students who are joining. Okay. So as I was discussing regarding, you know, the indirect light, now there is something known as a direct and an indirect. So something like, you know, you have seen those lamps being used uh, on the walls which are there uh, around your building compound and all fixed on your wall and you have uh, like, you know, light getting reflected on both the sides. Now, similar kind of thing you can experience in your room. 
uh, or somewhere where like you know you need a scattered light throughout the room and the light particularly focused at one spot and that can be done using one particular device or one particular light itself that is what we call as direct and indirect now after that again diffusion and the very simple example is that what i said last day was you have seen those lamps uh, if we go 10 or 15 years back from now or like not even 15 10 years back if we move on most of the people who are building a new house they used to uh, at the entrance gate they used to set two lights on the two poles you know uh, at the entrance gate on two sides of the gate with a white colored ball kind of stuff and inside that a light used to glow that used to provide a scattered light or, or a diffuse like I must say. Okay. Now it's not only about this one. When you fit those, uh, like you know, ceiling pits now, those ceiling lamps are there, which are fit inside the holes on top of your roof or something. Those lamps are also like you know exactly what we call as diffused because the LED lamps are there inside, and it's not the direct light from the LED that is being scattered and diffused via the panel being used on top of that. So moving further, uh, we have discussed regarding this, and we from here only we are supposed to discuss, I guess. Am I right, guys? Uh, we are supposed to discuss from this particular place, right? Naina, yes, is it right? Yeah. Yes, oh. sir. So you know, as a first step in planning your light, analyze each space in terms of the function. The, so you know, whenever we put something or do something in architecture, whenever you are joining your college in a few we a uh, few months, I must say. Anything that you do, it should be always planned in a proper manner. So we have, uh, once you're working on your design projects and all every semester, you will be working on your architecture and design project. New projects will be coming up. You have, first of all, you need a concept sheet that like, you know, uh, uh, we work on butter sheets to bring up your concept together, to show you the rough, uh, what uh, bubble diagram we call it. So where you are placing what, followed by that, what we have, is your usual plan, then the elevation section. So we go in detail slowly. In the same way, once we are placing light or we are utilizing light in a particular space that might be anything, we go step by step. The very first thing which comes up is the function. So we need to analyze what activities will occur in a particular space. Depending on that, we will, like, you know, we will use light. We need to understand that at the very first place. So for example, if it's a study room, requirement of light might be, might be comparatively more in comparison with if it's your bedroom or if it's last day I have told you guys like you know if it's a drawing room the requirement of light is comparatively more because that's the very first place in your house where every person who is coming to your house might enter uh, like you know if you have some courier guy who needs to wait for one or two minutes you need to find some papers might be at point at some point it, if it's required otherwise so it's it's a doorstep procedure it's done over there on or any other person who is coming to your house, drawing room is the very first place they are coming to. So we need a more amount of light over there, followed by your dining, then your bedroom, then your washroom, your kitchen, and a lot of other stuff, whatever utilities you are adding, or the whatever services you are adding to your particular structure. Now we have something known as tasks. So what seeing like, you know, tasks are to be done in that particular space. For example, now a function, once we decide a function for a space, the tasks might not be the same at some point. Uh, you know, most of the time you guys have noticed, or uh, I don't know if you have noticed that some places or point, a particular space is actually designed for a purpose. For example, only if you think your parents are buying a new apartment or building a new house, you are thinking, okay, this room is built for this purpose and this function and this will be done. Now, for example, you have built, uh, not, not, not right now, you have thought about a room and you have thought that, okay, it will be my gaming room. And your mom suddenly came and told that, okay, I have an extra cover, let me give it over here. You cannot reject that. So, you know, tasks and functions do not go hand in hand at some point. We need to see to that as well and accordingly use lights. Kind of objects that are being used, the architectural features, the location of the furniture. So, for example, a very simple thing I, I will tell you guys. You are having a LED tube light, you know, normally what we use I need the tube light on the wall now what happens is that uh, okay, you guys will tell me so for example we have a tube light on the wall okay for example something like this what you have over here uh, and that's my portfolio bag ignore it please uh, so you have a tube light like that now we uh, your parents have suddenly decided they have spoken with the interior firm or designer or someone 
and they need to get a wardrobe design and fix it in the room. So which is the best place to keep that wardrobe in your room? Can anyone tell? Opposite to the tube light. Join you. Uh, Naira, just wait for a while, you know, because you guys are there. I know some of you can answer. Students who have joined you, can you please answer? Someone, anyone from you guys? Jashuria, Alisa, Mridula. The opposite to the. Yeah, please respond. Opposite to the tube light, sir. Opposite to the tube light. Okay. Anyone else with a different answer or something like that? Okay. Alicia has message. Opposite to the tube light. Okay. Now, can anyone now tell me, Naira, you are telling. Now, Naira, you please tell me, why not towards the tube light? Like, if we are having the tube light, why not over here itself? Can you tell me that? So, because if it is opposite to the tube light, you can see what's there inside the cupboard. Absolutely. So, you know, what will happen if we place a wardrobe over here? What usually happens? Let me just show you my drawing on the screen itself. For example, you have a tube light over here, okay? This is the front part I am showing. Now, don't I'm using the mouse, okay? So, don't take it very seriously, the drawing part. Uh, and this is your wardrobe, just for example, I am telling you. Now, this is the front view. Let us take the side view now. From the side view, how it will look? Your tube light will be just like this, circular, because it's running like this. You're taking a side view. You're rotating this. Now, it was like this. Now, you're rotating it like this. So you just see one small, if it's a round shape, round square, shape square, whatever it is. And you're placing your wardrobe just below it, somewhat like this. Now, previously, what would have happened if this, like, you know, stuff was not there, then light would have scattered in all the directions. Light would have scattered over here. It would have fall, fallen here and throughout. And the light would have scattered throughout the room. But since you are, like, you know, uh, placing this wardrobe over here now, what will happen is that the very first incident ray will be like this. So whatever you are placing in front, if it's a bed, a table, or whatever is it, if you're placing it at this position, at this region, at this particular region, okay, then that will be under the shadow of this wardrobe and will not receive enormous amount of light. And in the room, it will be like a part of the room is under darkness. And that we cannot let it, uh, like, you know, we cannot let that thing happen. So that's why placing of objects in a particular room is very much important. Now, I must tell you how, like, you know, not a question will come at this point because the doubt might come to your mind, uh, like, you know, why we are discussing so many stuff. Will Nata ask us to describe, okay, please let's describe how the light will be there or stuff. What Nata asks usually is that they might ask you, like, you know, a certain point, uh, they might take it under the section of riddles or something like that. Anyways, it's always jumbled up. So a question might come like this, select the one out of the four options which has the base, best placement of light or the best placement of objects in the room, something like this. And in a very small, uh, like, you know, cubicle diagram, you are shown four images. And out of that, you need to select one. Over there, you might have something like this wherein you need to understand the placement of light and stuff. Particularly for whatever I am discussing right now on the slide, regarding that I am talking about. Something else might be also there on whatever we will be discussing or we have already discussed. Now, location of furniture, as I have mentioned, the mood. Okay, what atmosphere uh, is it desired? Again, going back to that candlelight dinner thing. Okay, last day, what we, uh, last to last class, what we have discussed. Should it be variable or not? So, uh, okay, uh, just uh, guys, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, you know, I'm just going back to whatever we have discussed. Students who have joined you, I just, call you out by names or uh, like, you know, people who were not there in the last, last last class. What sort of light you guys would like to have if you are going on a candlelight dinner with your partner? Alisa, uh, then who else is there? Jaishuria, Mridula, uh, Tanish, and uh, Varad. Guys, can you please respond? Am I audible? Uh, no, not at all. Guys, am I audible to you guys? Yes, sir. Yeah, please respond. It's a very prank class over here, you know. Whenever we discuss uh, the students who are here, they know we have already gone through this. 
that's why i called you out by name they, we have already discussed this particular thing in a previous class so you guys just tell us tell me what sort of light you guys would love to have if you are going on a candlelight dinner or uh, okay let's leave candlelight dinner if you are going out with your partner for some dinner or stuff what sort of light would you like to have alisa Alisa is very clever. She just suddenly told, "Okay, sir, so it's candlelight. Let's go with candlelight." Okay, great. Someone else with a different answer or something? Mridula, are you there? Mridula, can you please respond? Yes, sir. Yeah. What sort of light would you love to have? Light with less brightness. Light with less brightness. Okay, okay. So, okay. Uh, Arisha has told less light focusing on the couple. <laughs> okay, okay. So you know why not? Now why not? You would love to have a bright light, a kind of street lamp. You would you will be able to see each other better, right? Why not a big bright light of hundred watts or might be something much more bigger? Jai Surya will tell this. Jai Surya, are you there? Yes, sir. Sorry, Jay. Okay, name is a bit big. Jay, is it fine? Okay, sir. Yeah. So, why not the big street lamps? Okay, Tai. Tai was there. Tai was there. Shayad, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Th please tell why not a big light, like you know, big lamp. Tai, Shayad, please respond. Alisa has told something. Okay, less less light would make the eyes uh, shine out. Quite deep thought. That's it. Fine. So I will just tell you why not because you know every moment or every place has a different atmosphere, a different ambience. Ah, uh, everything has a different way of understanding things. Very simple example. Moving out from this emotional, uh, like you know, attire. If you move out to a very normal place of a movie theater. Someone asks you, "Okay, you came to Aina Oxford. We have a special news for you today. We will switch on all lights and we will show you the movie." I guess no one will like it. Okay, Varad has told because we are going out on a dinner with a special one. Okay, very good answer. So you know, it's always how our eyes work, how we perceive light, and how things are working out. Now, this is what something I have told you to make the class a bit interactive, and you know, you guys don't feel bored. If I am speaking about the structure, I have showed you guys last day. how light works a same object in presence of a light from a particular angle can look different in a similar way a presence of your mind a presence of your attire a presence of the feeling a presence of everything that you want to have in that particular atmosphere might change with the usage of the light that you are using and like you know the kind of uh, light that is having not only light you know the kind of sound that you are having the kind of acoustics and what sort of mindset you people are having everything depends at a certain point so this is how things work and now why not like you know bright light because that would like you know really not work out you are looking for something we will go through a color psychology chapter known as color psychology it's already uh, like you know done for some students but we will revise it in the upcoming days as well and for the students who are joining new for the crash course and stuff color psychology is actually where we understand color and how each color affects our mind for example like you know few colors are attractive few colors just for a very simple line i am telling few colors are attractive few colors are not so somehow or the other they affect us psychologically and we get attracted the attraction is coming from a certain point of our mind so similarly these things all these things are interrelated and that is why we need that kind of ambience not this light okay. now moving further let me share the screen we have discussed regarding all these things we have gone through like you know mood we have gone through style what must the lighting go with uh, i just take a sip of water okay now in the next like you know try to set the priorities this is again very simple which one you should set i have already told every like you know everything for everything you do in life there should be priorities for now if you are giving boards boards should be your first priority Followed by Nata, then getting a good college, then something else, taking our like you know time 
uh, taking a certain span of leave, going for a tour, because once you join architecture, you won't have leave. Similarly, in this way, setting out anything in design, in architecture, in lighting, everything is as a, is a step by step process. We will move further, you know, then so it's telling out, you know, how to consider a space as a whole and all. Uh, so we will start from here how to light a particular thing or how to light it once we have analyzed the space and once we have set, like, figured out what sort of objects will be there. So once we have analyzed the space and decided what to light, you can decide how to best light it using the three basic uh, lighting techniques. Ambient lighting, the general overall illumination that enables like, you know, one to move about easily and safely defines the space. So I will consider the second point, you know, before the first one. Uh, yeah, definitely. People to move safely and easily is always a point. But before that also, a light which defines the space, as I have already mentioned. If you are going out to a pub, what you will notice is like, you know, light is dim, mostly blue colored lights are being used with soft warm light at some point. So that defines the space. After that, now you need to arrange or orient light. If it's a space for persons to move or enter, let us use those warm lights. If it's a uh, place for the people, couples to dance, then let us use those blue lights. So it always depends. Now make the room seem larger. Again, a similar kind of thing. You know, depending on the usage of lights, your room might seem larger. Your depending on the how you have placed the furniture, the room might be seen uh, like you know, seem larger or smaller, or it depends how you are utilizing that particular space. Now ascent, uh, like like you know, ascent lighting. So light to view what's special. Ascent lighting direct uh, directs extra light and thus as uh, like you know extra attention to selected objects and surfaces. Ascent lighting draws the eyes, provides dramatic interest, and adds excitement. It says, like, you know, look here. Task lighting is what? Look, light to walk by. So task lighting illuminates areas where work is performed. Reading, paperwork, food preparation, laundry, games, hobbies. Paperwork and reading generally require, you know, plentiful, well-diffused uh, light coming from, uh, like, you know, over the shoulder or from the side. For kitchen and hobby tasks, a, concern, a concentrated light from the above usually works the best. Okay. Now, can you give me an example of a concentrated light, you know, uh, somewhere being used at in your home? I have already told the place where it is being used. I will not repeat it. A place where you get to see concentrated light being used in your home. Drawing, drawing room. Okay, somewhere else, which is just being mentioned a few seconds back. Table lamp, okay, quite makes quite sense. Alicia replied with table lamp. Others? Or, uh, kitchen room. Uh, uh, Sana, please tell. Uh, kitchen room. Kitchen. Where in kitchen? You need to name a particular place, object, or something like that. Uh, dining hall. No, no, you told kitchen, go into kitchen, you were in the right place, which what I was searching for, you are in and around that particular place. Just go in kitchen, what object you get to see. That. Uh, near the gas stove. Gas stove, above gas stove, what is being used? Uh, the chimney. chimney. So chimney always has a spotlight. Uh, like, I guess, uh, not only nowadays, from beforehand itself, every chimney is always fixed with a, like, you know, light strip or might be circular lights within that. So chimney is a very good example to understand this. The light is being focused and placed in such a way that you get to see what you are cooking. Your focus is over there. And even if you don't have lights, like, you know, in your, it might be, or it's always there for people, like, you know, in a kitchen. But just for example, even if you switch it off and heat something on that stove, you have like, you know, focus lights towards what is in there. So you get a proper view about, of that. So the next thing which comes up is your where to place the lighting. Now see, this is a very good example, okay? How the lighting is getting reflected and what we are seeing after that. So a key element in how to uh, light is where to place the lighting. This is especially important to, in avoiding glare and like, you know, vanilling reflections. 
It is also a determining factor in whether a surface texture is to be emphasized or minimized. So it's, it's all the work of light, you know, whatever you see. For example, uh, okay, let me get something over here, which I can show you guys. Have both of this. Wait, for example, you know, you see this mouse, okay? So this mouse, what we have is that you can understand there's a certain way the line is passing by this cut, like, you know, uh, cut is being made. Now, this is the work of lighting which you are getting. So light is get coming here, getting reflected, and then you get to see this mouse. Uh, you get to see what is something on there on the opposite side one. Uh, not very clearly, but you can see over here, the laptop is being uh, displayed. You get to see at least something of this stuff. Now, the same light, if I'm placing it like this, now see, this part, previously, like, you know, are you guys able to see that? Okay, let me enlarge it. I'm really sorry, I just forgot about, like, you know, let me. Now, see, right now, you, can, you are able to see very clearly, okay, these marks or these lightings. If I just move this light like this, are you guys able to see the lining over here at this position, at this top part? No, sir. Why not? So because the light is glaring. Okay, Bharat is telling yes. Bharat, this part I am talking about, this top part. What is happening? Why you are not able to see? Why are you not able to see? Reflecting from the... Yes. Too much light is reflecting from that part. It's it's the glare. What it's the glare. It's the glare of the tube light which is in top, and it's getting reflected from the certain point at a particular incident angle, which is directly focusing from this point. What's happening is that how glare is glare is created. There is not, like you know no scattered light, so it's like the intensity of light from this particular region from the surface is so much that the central line, the gap which is there, it's blocking it. You are not able to see. And that's why you are like, you know, feeling like that, that there's nothing. So this is this is what happens and when you read, like, you know, you sometimes feel that, okay, let me turn the book or let me place it in this way. You, why, even while using phone also, you are like looking like this and suddenly you see that the tube light, like, you know, it's falling. So what you do is that you turn like this and then you try to use it. It happens. Sometimes might be you are noticing it. Sometimes might be you are not noticing it. It always happens. Okay. Now, uh, let's move to the slide back again. Yeah. So this is especially important to avoid glare and bending effect. It also determines the factor. One, how, as I have mentioned, the surface texture and emphasized or to be like you know to be emphasized or minimized. So how lighting is there, a texture also matters in that. Okay. Now, again, see, this is again something which you are uh, seeing over here, how, at what angle the light is falling and at what angle it's getting reflected and how it's occurring. So from here, something over here, the glazy part, you get to see that like, you know, it's getting reflected at a certain angle from this part, is, uh, it's getting reflected at some other angle. Now, again, in case like, you know, uh, it, it can, in the, in the case of lighting close to the wall, uh, grazing rather than washing, like, you know, reveals defects in the workmanship. So how the lights are placed sometimes near the wall, we can also understand the uh, problem in the workmanship by how the light is getting reflected in the wall, the kind of incident angle that's becoming, the kind of the thickness the light wave is being created. How much light is required? The amount of light required for good vision depends on the age of the people using the lighting, and also the reference, you know, uh, also the like, you know, the kind of uh, people they are using and the reflectance of the task. So older people require more light at age of 65, we need twice as much light, light uh, to see as well as we did at the age of 20, I mean, sorry. So, you know, at the age of 20, right now, whatever age you are, once you will be 65 and you will remember that once upon a time we went uh, for this Nata crash course preparation and there was a guy uh, there was sir who was talking about all this stuff. That time you will remember, you might remember about these things. Okay. Uh, just give me a minute, guys.
Fine. So, you know, uh, what we are seeing over here is that uh, the table below shows the recommended level of illumination. In case of a range is been directed, the low value being for young people under 25, the middle value for people for, uh, in between the age of 25 to 65 years of old, and the higher value being for the older persons over 65. So we are seeing here, like, you know, the kind of area of activity that is being, uh, that is occurring and the light values that we need to have over there, depending on the age factor as well. Now, sometimes question comes in NATA asking you about the particular or something in and around the lighting value. So what you need to do at that point, you need to understand, like, you know, answer on basis of this age in between, like, you know, this 25 to 65, the light values which are mentioned over here. We all always try to refer this actually, because this is coming something in between and this is uh, like, you know, all the time it goes with almost every person who is there. So we have passageways. Now passageways usually we require a light uh, of four units or now. For conservation, we need around five. For grooming, around 30. Reading and study, it's 50. Kitchen and counter, it's 75. For hobbies, it's around 100. So this is how the lighting works. We will also see some other slides some other day, or uh, like, you know, where you will understand that, okay, how the shades are being used or so. Now, moving further, choose the fixtures. So how much energy is consumed? In today's world, with increased concern about energy consumption, some choices may be limited by codes and standards about the wattage that can be applied in a particular lighting application. We need to consider the effective, uh, the, uh, the efficiency of fixture, the effectiveness of the fixture, the distance between the fixture and the car. The use of occupancy, sensing, like, you know, dim uh, dimming or multi-level controls. So this is how we need to understand that how much energy is being consumed at a certain level. And also, you know, at some point, uh, nowadays, whenever you work as an architect, you will be working, you will have, uh, you get ratings for different buildings of energy consumption. So if your building, like, you know, is consuming less energy, the energy rating is high. So how, how you have seen the star ratings on refrigerators, television sets and all. So, you know, people uh, nowadays, they're trying to use, utilize as much as external or daylighting as possible. So during the day, as much as light you can use might be in any sort of way, like, you know, in your mall or anywhere. So it's better. And like, you know, people are, or uh, the, uh, like, you know, plan and the uh, stuff who are passing and all, it is considered as a good sign. And the government is approving it much faster. So choose the controls now. Wall switches, dimmers, programmable systems, uh, change the lighting scene to suit the activity or the programmable, change the lighting level automatically according to the time of the day. This is known as photocell. Change of lighting scene at your will to set a mood or to create atmosphere is known as manual. And turn off lights automatically when no one is present to save energy is known as occupancy sensing. So these are the different programmable, uh, like, you know, you can tell devices, dimmers or wall switches that is being used nowadays in construction and what is their activity. Now you need to know these names and what, where, for what purpose they are being used for. Because this is a very important part from where again question might come. They might tell, you know, that uh, change, uh, ch change the uh, lighting level automatically according to the time of day. Um, so this is being referred to which, uh, which one answer, uh, choose one of the following answers. Uh, now there will be four options. You need to choose the correct one as four percent. Now we have lighting and design and a quick application guide. So lumens. Give me a second. We get to see here lumens. Now the lumen symbol that is I M uh, is the SI like you know derived unit of luminous flux. Or the measure uh, of a measure of the total quantity of visible light emitted by a source. Okay. Now the luminous flux differs from power uh, radiant plus in that radiant plus in the uh, like you know use all electromagnetic waves emitted while uh, luminous plus is gauged according to a model of the human eye sensitivity to various wavelengths. Lumens are related to lux in that one lux is one lumen per square meter. The lumen is defi defined in relation to the candela as one IM is equals to one CD dot SR. So this is how the SI unit and the stuffs are being defined at the, at the uh, like, you know, 
uh, derived. Okay, so now we see uh, the amount of lumens, the investment line, and the LED. So what is power? So if it's uh, so there, these are the, actually the three kinds of lights. I must tell that this is if you are having a light with lumen, then it's like you know two thousand six hundred IMG utilized. If it's a uh, uh, incandescent light being used, then it's 150 watts. If it's an LED being used, it's 25 to 28 watts. Similarly, the beacon ratings have been given in comparison with the humans, uh, what, what was being utilized before. So you see like, you know, how energy consumption is being reduced day by day. Okay, now we have something known as a foot candle. We will go through this and this will be the last part of today's class. So the foot candle, the name foot candle conveys the luminance cast on a surface by one candle, source one foot away. Sometimes foot candle abbreviated FC IM or, uh, or uh, sorry, FC or IM by FT square or sometimes FT uh, along with C, okay. Now the, like, you know, we have something called as ETC. That is the radiance is another way of saying how much energy is being released from the light source? This is, I guess, most of you have heard about solar radiation. Have you guys heard about solar radiation? Right? Have you heard about solar radiation? Yes, sir. Okay, so what do you understand when someone is telling you that solar radiation? What do you understand from that? Radiation emitted by the sun. Okay, so you know radiation is nothing but something that is being given to you. You can take this in very simple way. Something that is being given or thrown out that is known as something being radiated. So we have something similar over here as well. That is the radiance is another way of saying how much energy is being released from a light source. Illumines is the uh, is what results from the use of light. Your turn or if you turn your flashlight in the in a dark room and your light sometimes uh, like uh, and you light something up sorry sorry you light something up that's illuminance uh, illuminance okay turning on a light in a dark room to make the bugler visible gives you illuminance this is again a very good example being given now the candle power is a way of measuring how much light is produced by a light bulb, LED, or by striking an ART in a carbon arc spotlight. A candle power as a unit is a measure of uh, is a measure. Uh, sorry, uh, candle power as a unit of measure is not the same as foot candle. A candle power is a measurement of the light at a source, not the object you light up. So what is candle power has been very like, you know, precisely being described, uh, described over here. And the candle is the metric equivalent of the light output of that one candle based on the metric calculations. Okay, now summing it all up, candle power is the rating of light output to the source using English measurements. Food candles are measurements of light at the illuminated object. Lumens are metric, measure, uh, metric equivalent to food candles. In that they are measured through at an object you want to illuminate, divide the number of lumens you have produced or the capable of producing by 12.57 and you get the candle power equivalent of that light source. This is the way you should calculate. Now, th now these things you just understand there is nothing to be calculated in NATA you will be asked nothing about calculating such stuff. So you need not to worry about that. Just remember these terms and what means what. We have now converted the measurements uh, taken some distance like you know from the illuminated object converted it from a metric standard to an English unit of measure and further converted it from a measure of illumination to a measure of radiation. Okay. The diagrammatic explanation has been given over here and 10% of total area of room should have a, like 10% total area of a room is known as natural light. So this is the ceiling cavity your luminous path a plane from where your light is being emitted, these two are the lights, your walls, uh, so you have the L, the horizontal reference plane, and your floor cavity is the air. So one candle is equal to one lumen, one lux is equal to one lumen per meter square, and one meter square is the surface area. And this is the distance is equal to one meter. So every explanation has been given to you on a diagrammatic basis as well for the better understanding.
<coughs> of similar thing again the what is comparison and human comparison what has been done and this is again something new that the the new frontier or something we will start from this in the next class for now like you know just to clear it now you guys tell me if you have any doubts or something like that please switch on your video and like you know let us have a discussion Guys, am I audible to all? Yes, sir. Yeah, not tell me whatever doubts you guys are having. Tanish, Sana, please switch on. Like, you know, it's better to interact with uh, you guys are joining here, paying the fees and joining here for some experience, for some understanding, right? So please don't make it like, you know, you joined and then always you are on the other side of the camera. We never know what you are doing or talking to me. You can see your friends, like, you know, everyone, you all of you are going to join the same branch. So, you all you all get to know someone is from bangalore uh, like naina sana both are from bangalore takshil <laughs> sumed uh, okay who else is there tanish nitin ridula rutuja shay dai rohan tell me any doubts anything no sir no sir something that you want me to go again with whatever is been discussed till now so can you send that pdf in the group yeah please repeat the pdf so can you send it in the group and i didn't get you still you know please respond once more <laughs> so the pdf the slide that you shared can you send it in the group okay you are asking for, okay i thought told you know once it's covered i will be definitely sharing the whole pdf you'll get it in your group pdf you will be getting it in your group once the class is completed you will get the pdf in your group Something else? Anyone? Nothing? Okay, fine then. Um, that's all for the day, guys. Go and experience candlelight in Nepal. You guys all have completed your exam, so when is the exam? When is the upcoming exam? Someone left in between. Fine, guys. Okay, that's all for the day. Enjoy. Please respond sometime. Just don't sit. Takshil, what happened? Nothing, sir. Ramzan didn't go well. Sir, I am not a Muslim. So it's A I L. Nana, I am not A L I. Nana, you are telling something. Thank you. No, sir. Okay, great. Fine, guys. That's all for the day. See you all in the next class. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Hey, Rohan. Are you there? Rohan? Yes, sir. Yeah, you didn't respond throughout the class. What happened? No, I did. Like, I, yeah, I was actually. I don't think you are a kind of a quiet guy. You are a kind of chilling guy, right? So, no, 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 no. I'm kind of like a yeah, quiet guy. Yeah, yeah, you like, you know, uh, I just noticed you right now throughout the class. I didn't call your name also anytime. It's fine. Okay, you understood, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay fine, Ron. Bye. Bye, Shuman. Good night. Bye.